with my community. Today on our show, I have Susan Sinclair, and I'm so excited to have Susan be on the call. Susan actually hails from, is it Washington State, Susan? Is that where you're from? I'm pretty peripatetic. I was actually born in Hollywood, California. (laughs) (laughs) Never really lived there. (laughs) I've lived in probably 10 or 15 different states. But Washington is what feels like home, so I claim it as home. Oh, there you go. There you go. You know what? That's what it's all about. So wherever you feel at home is where is where home is, right? So, so Susan, I, 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 Susan is a Reiki master, and she is a soul healer and a soul. So sorry, a sound healer and a soul reader, and she loves to work with other people to help them awaken their spirituality and seek their true purpose. And when you said that to me, it just clicked to me because I work with people um, to help them build their brand and understand their brand awareness. And they, the first thing they have to know is what their purpose is. So Susan, won't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Well, I would call myself an accidental entrepreneur. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> came about from my own spiritual awakening. I was happily working at the two best jobs I've ever had, mm-hmm. teaching in a college and working in a library. Wow, two favorite. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and then I had a Reiki attunement, and all of these psychic gifts opened up, and all mm-hmm. of this new awareness opened up that just mm-hmm. pulled me right out of the conventional workaday world and into mm-hmm. becoming a spiritual entrepreneur because there really was no slot in the business <laughs> world for what I did, yeah. which is healing souls, reading their souls, clearing out a lot of things that have kept them stuck energetically uh-huh. and putting them on the path to what they really came here to do so they could enjoy their lives. Oh, that is so important. So so I... I know this much about Reiki. Can you explain a little bit more about what it is for those of us who are newbies? Okay. Reiki is a pretty well-established energy healing system. It came from Japan, Mm -hmm. but most people who've practiced Reiki believe that this is truly universal healing energy that people have been working with since humans realized you could use energy to heal. Some people think this is what Jesus used, that this is what every Mm -hmm. powerful spiritual healer uses. So it is universal Mm -hmm. life energy that you need to be attuned to in order to let it flow through your physical being to heal others. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I've been doing, about three years ago, I started practicing yoga. And just by breathing, and I, I just feel so much better, so much more alert and and so much calmer after I've practiced yoga. Now, my family makes fun of me, but I enjoy it, so it's okay. And I'm not, I'm by far not a, um, you know, I'm not an, a, a yoga expert by, by, by far. I've seen people do some amazing things with their bodies, but it to me, it's more about the breathing and just letting my brain just stop thinking so much and things like that so yeah it sounds like it's very like i think it's you know a a little bit of what you're talking about so sometime i'd like to get that done that sounds amazing so so you had it done with for yourself and that's what changed everything that's what changed everything literally the next day i walked in after that initial reiki attunement Mm -hmm. and everyone in the class said you look so different Wow. I didn't feel very different by that mm-hmm. point, but it was evident to those who were energy sensitive that uh-huh. something profound had shifted. Yeah. So that's, that's when amazing. I started hearing voices in my head. I started feeling energy in my body. Stones mm-hmm. began communicating with me and disembodied spirits. And oh, wow. It, you know, journey just, just popped. Everything popped wide open. The door opened. And <laughs> super open, and that's not really ideal. Uh, Uh, That's what I try to help people with now when they find that they've had a spontaneous awakening, which can happen Mm -hmm. through yoga practice or energy healing or even a traumatic life event. People's abilities suddenly pop open and they are flooded with this extra sensory perceptions Mm -hmm. that they don't know how to manage or -hmm. process or integrate into the rest of their life. So. I've lived it, and I know how disruptive it can be, and I would real that's part of the whole thing. We have dual operating systems for a reason, mm. because the world is so much more than meets the eye. Yes. And when we open to what is unseen, mm-hmm. like physical eye, and begin to navigate 
the spiritual realms along with the physical realm, mm-hmm. life is meant to work better because you've got your second, you're running on your full systems instead of just this partial physical sensing. Right, right. So now how long if have you been doing this? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, since 2011, that was okay. the awakening, and that's pretty much everything kicked off within six to nine months. I was out wow. of the business world and on the path to being what they call a medicine woman. So Ooh. it was it was fast. That, that was is fast. fast. That is fast. So so um, so it pretty much. I, my, I was going to ask you, you know, the, my next question was, how did you, why did you decide to be an entrepreneur? But it sounds like it just happened so fast and you were it. <laughs> you just became and I was following, Yeah, just <laughs> following guidance because I didn't really understand what I was supposed to do. I was happy where I was, but I mm-hmm. could see that there wasn't as good a fit. Right. There was really no place in the library for all this psychic sensing. Right. And right. as a teacher, it could, be, it could be useful, but not central and Mm -hmm. the guidance I got from some some psychics that I really trusted that I felt great about working with they said you are a medicine woman you need to step onto this path yeah that's your gift I (laughs) obediently did (laughs) good for you that's so exciting so so um I know it sounds like you're an avid learner like me so being in the in the library and being a teacher, um, you know, are there books that you would recommend to like help for people like either to to find you know you know maybe if they want to tap into that or they want to learn more about that that you would recommend? Oh, uh, my my own personal journey has been around coordinating uh, the business and the spiritual side. Yeah. So money issues were a biggie for me, and yeah. the book Money: A Love Story has been very useful to me in healing my own relationship with money in a very loving and practical way. Also, Barbara Stanny's Overcoming Under Earning, Mm. very very powerful because that is where a lot of entrepreneurs are is dealing with chronic under earning, which is Mm -hmm. keeping them from enjoying their life because they're not, they're on purpose, Mm -hmm. but there are areas that need attention for them to get full enjoyment Mm -hmm. out of their purpose. Absolutely. Absolutely. Those books help a lot. Yeah. If you're into spiritual, I would say the two most powerful books I've read, uh, well, Doreen Virtue's Realms of the Earth Angel helps you understand where your soul came from. Really? That's very, I, did, very I have profound. one of her books. I have one of her books upstairs, and I don't think it's that one. But I read it about her story and how she started, and she kind of got started late in life, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, so many of them bloomed as mature women or mature adults because the circumstances were right. Right, right. So, yeah, but she, this idea of knowing where your soul came from, that's the okay. foundation of my work with other people. When I tell you, here's the origin of your soul, here's the mission of your soul mm-hmm. on this in this lifetime, and here's what's interfering with it. Oh, wow. That helps people get the clarity about why they struggle yeah. with stuff so much or the same stuff over and over over and over again and how to yeah. clear those patterns energetically so yeah. that they're actually free mm-hmm. to do what they can do unhindered yeah. yeah because it's it's like isn't it i only, i can't remember who who said the definition of madness is doing the same thing and expecting different results and it's true and i think we uh, there's so many people that live that and they go i just don't understand why i can't be happy but they keep doing the same things they aren't they aren't changing or making the trying to seek out ways to make it better so um so yeah i will get those um i'll, I'll ha- have you if you don't mind sharing those with me again and i'll put those in the post that in, with the links because the they're all sound like great books, especially the ones like on money and on under earning. So many of my friends, and I, I have to say, I'm being very honest. I've had my own issues with it. In fact, I've got a book from Marion Williams. Marion Williams said about that. It talks about you know having a, a loving, a, having a better loving relationship with money, and I think so many of us, especially women, tend to play it down. You know what I mean? So. And that so those sound like wonderful books. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. I'll probably be sharing those in blog posts too. So if people come to my site and read, yeah. I will have reviews and oh, resources awesome. of books like that because yeah, I'm a book person yeah. and <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like I it. It's a thing and, and you know, reading enriches us. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm you know, I think I think you know, you can't you can't learn enough. I always like to, to do that. So yeah, I would definitely be having your links into the blog post. And if there's certain blogs that you think that might be helpful, then yeah, we'll put those in there too. So for sure. Um, so um, 
Yeah, I knew that you talked about that. So I know that you know you and I met online and we met on Facebook. So are there certain social medias that you like personally or that you're using for business to help you, you know, spread your story so that people find you? I've been finding that Facebook has been more appropriate for either groups like where we met, where mm -hmm. we find mutual support, yeah. or just publicizing what I'm doing. Um, yeah. It's more social, and that's yeah. very useful. Yeah. For business, I'm finding LinkedIn to be more valuable, and mm -hmm. I am really working to create a a very attractive and, you know, what would I say, savvy LinkedIn profile that mm -hmm. really speaks to the people I want to work with mm -hmm. and who I know are meant to work with me. Yeah, that's so great. More powerful for me right now for business. Oh, that's good to know. Because I mean, it's funny because you, I always tell my my audience and my clients, it's a don't you know you it's hard to be on every profile and do it all well. You could spend all, there are people that do that for a living. So, so for us, or most of most of us are solopreneurs, you know, I have a VA who helps me and I'm very grateful to, that I can, that I have her. Um, but you still need to be interacting on social media and doing your own posts and replying to people's posts and comments and being in the, in the groups that you like you and I met. Um, so, but LinkedIn, I have to say, is uh, of all of all the platforms, it's probably on the lower tier for me, because that's not where I find a lot of my business, a lot of my my clientele. But that's not to say that I shouldn't be on there too. So I'll have to come and look at that again. We'll have to we'll have to have another conversation about good old LinkedIn, because I I used to be on it a lot for business, and then I kind of like went over to like you know Pinterest and Facebook and Instagram and places like that. So <laughs> yeah, so that might be something for you to do. I was going to ask you before I forget this thought, which is not something that I plan on asking you, but I wanted to, I, I, don't, I don't think you would mind. You know, when you're talking to people, can you talk to people like, can you sense things like, like talking to me or do you have to be in front of them? Do you have to be with them? I do some of my best work by phone and Skype because mm. I work, I'm a sound healer. So sound is very important to me and, and working by phone allows me not to be visually distracted. Oh, so I really tune into the, the unseen vibrations and energy. But yes, if I request it, mm -hmm. and if it's appropriate, I can sense things about people, especially about their souls. Yeah. Again, a lot of people think psychics can tune into anything. Mm -hmm. You know, what's my boyfriend like? Um, <laughs> where Where's my job going? Right. I have to ask to get that kind of information. What I naturally tap into is, where are you as a soul in your journey? Where did you come from? Are you on purpose? Are there some tangled things in your life? Like, are, where are your relationships snarled up? Mm -hmm. Where are you being blocked from yeah. moving forward? That's what I tune into because that's soul level stuff. Yeah. Oh, that sounds so... I loved hearing this. I love to know more about it. I actually went to... Um, I have a good friend of mine who... Uh, Another person I probably need, probably need to connect you to. Her name is Emily, and she lives out in Montana. And um, she took me to a psychic, and I, I just came with a very open mind. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to embrace whatever it, whatever she's willing to tell me or whatever she sees or senses. And it was really a wonderful experience. But I've never talked to anybody who like like yourself who can sense into you know, tapping into your soul, and you can hear it by sound. I think that's that's just fascinating, fascinating stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how, I mean, I've always said, you know, physical senses are pretty much all the same. We can see pretty much all the same stuff mm -hmm. here. The range is very similar. But right. psychically, everyone is much, much more differentiated and diverse. Yeah. So, yeah. yes, you know, what I can tap into is very different from what others do. And it can be quite fascinating to explore all these yeah. possibilities. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. So, so um, um, when you're, and this is, um, this is kind of like a little, a little bit of a plug here, I should say, but like, you know, cause since I do a lot of branding stuff, you know, what are you doing to bring, to bring awareness to your business? You know, how are you promoting yourself and your business, um, either online or locally? Do you do, do you split it up or do you focus in one area or the, of the, or the other? I'm finding that, um, that I am just emerging into this whole branding awareness. Mm -hmm. As I've gotten clear about who I'm meant to serve, mm -hmm. that helps me shape the images and the words and the way I reach out to them. Mm -hmm. I have found that for me, live events are unparalleled because something about just being physically present, people get the full, the full awareness of my energy and my possibilities, and they are, that's where I've gotten a lot of clients is by doing live mm -hmm. events. That's 
they, in fact, they said for local visibility, that's number one. It is. Be it there. Is. Just be there. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Online is very powerful because that is where people can find you worldwide. Mm -hmm. And since yeah. you have the capacity to work worldwide through Skype, through right. the internet, through mm -hmm. phone lines that can go anywhere, anyhow. Right. It expands your reach. So my website is top of my list to upgrade mm -hmm. and create a, a, a representative image and wow. branding that speaks to the people that I know are meant to work with me. Yeah. And so, I have to say on that darla <laughs> well that I mean, yeah we'll and we'll definitely talk about that because i know that i have to say um i have to applaud you because i mean you you are already light years you know very much ahead of so many people that i work with because they don't know they don't understand how important it is to know their purpose you already know so in that that you know once you know what your purpose is it just gives you so much more clarity to know who you're meant to serve how to talk to them how to find them you know all of that is all part of it and in once you understand that and you embrace it it just you're excited to share it so i think you know that's you know you're gonna you're gonna be just fine you're gonna be just great with your with all of your with um your website but it is it is so much about it and your brand is really you too so the fact that you're going out there and you're getting you know going to you know um, networking events and meetups and you know you have to tell me what you what you're doing um i know like in my area in cincinnati i live in ohio in the greater cincinnati area and there are are meetups and there are um, um, places that you can network and stuff. It's just it, we're a very conservative area down here, so I have to push myself to get out because I fo my focus is more online than it is locally. But I like being in front of people, so I'm I'm actually getting back into doing more workshops and things like that because I, I want to be able to I want to be able to help other people and and locally it, it, I get a high. <laughs> It's a natural high. So, so yeah, thanks for encouraging me to push myself out there a little bit more. So now when you're doing things locally, are you doing, um, are you doing, going to like, um, chamber of commerce events or how do you find meetups? How are you finding your, your tribe? Well, because I'm relatively new back in the area, I've been to, I've lived in Seattle off and on multiple times but mm -hmm. this is the first time I've been there from this type of spiritual perspective right, right so before I was meeting with completely different people now I'm kind of discovering from scratch where mm -hmm. where's my community yeah. so yes live events I, I teach workshops at the local well the East West bookshop and Vision Quest bookshop because these are for spiritual seekers mm -hmm. I've looked at meetups that that are about spiritual seeking and, yeah. and shamanism because I like shamanism, a very complementary approach. Uh -huh. But I'm still exploring yeah. to figure out where is my tribe and where do they actually gather. Yeah. So, yeah, but yeah. the meetups have been great. Chamber of Commerce not fitting me so well, but could be right. very useful for other people mm -hmm. who are perhaps a little more in the conventional. Yes. World, in, a, in, a, in a business that the regular world understands. Right. <laughs> right. But you know what? You made a good point of that is that, you know, don't focus on areas that you know where they're not going to be. And that's why if you know what your purpose is and you know where your what your true calling is, then that helps guide you too. So, you know, it sounds like you've already, you're already hitting the ground running and you're hitting, you're going in the right places and you know a lot of times you just have to keep going to see okay that didn't work where can I go next and so I think that makes a big difference too and just having that positive mindset just to keep going right <laughs> well the main the main thing for me and this would be if I were going to give anyone business advice mm -hmm. which I would I the one number one business skill on LinkedIn, I read an article that said number one business skill is salesmanship. Mm -hmm. I would have to respectfully disagree with that and say we need to go deeper. The number one business success skill is your connection to your inner and higher guidance. Mm -hmm. If your guidance system is working, your spiritual guidance system is mm -hmm. working, you will be led to the people, the types of events. The, the best way to work for you to reach the people you want to reach. My whole premise has been that I follow spirit mm -hmm. to the people, to the connections, to the events. And yes, there has still been a little bit of trial and error where it's mostly been about me clarifying to the universe, oh, no, this is not satisfactory. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting the results I desire here, even though they're saying, but you made a good connection. <laughs> but this person is not as compatible as I desire. Well, then the universe says, so who is it you desire? <laughs> and as I get clearer about that, then mm -hmm. 
automatically filtering out what doesn't work and being directed to what will work mm -hmm. and connections and possibilities opening up pretty much out of the blue mm -hmm. and in ways that I couldn't predict, control, or make happen. That's right. the other premise that I would say is American business is highly, if you're thinking about the energy balance of yin and yang, mm -hmm. which most Western people are still kind of familiar with that, that right. yin is the receptive Okay. receiving nurturing energy mm -hmm. and yang is the active driving right. energy mm -hmm. we are so into yang overdrive <laughs> so we, true <laughs> we have neglected the power of yin which yeah. is to open and receive from the universe through channels we cannot consciously manipulate or control mm -hmm. what we really need right. and the directions we're meant to go so I'm super yin <laughs> as a person <laughs> and this has been my premise is how can I succeed mm -hmm. being yin? Right. <laughs> Versions of yin and yang, which are not typical or standard for the uh, for you know your regular entrepreneurs mm -hmm. or the regular business world. Like I say, I must do it differently because I can't physically survive yeah. being that out there, that pushing, that driving, that right. chasing. I cannot do it. I've right. just about killed myself trying. Yeah. So yeah. I finally had to stop and say, bring it to me. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? <laughs> so that's, that's where I'm still exploring, but mm -hmm. it is, the, that's why I would say number one business skill, especially for entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. tap into your intuition, clear the connection to your inner and higher guidance. It is the foundation for every bit of success that you'll have. Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree with you there. I really do, because I know I've worked with coaches and and talk to people and my friends and they're like you know darling you you know they 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 said that I I'm very intuitive and then when I know something I I know yes that's the direction I need to go or no that doesn't feel right and I I can sense that and I'll stop you know so I don't try to keep going in a direction that I know is not serving me and not serving anyone else so um but yeah I, I would probably say I'm more yin than yang <laughs> for sure and I think that I'm a more of a creative soul so I you know I'm, I, I've always been I've worked in the corporate industry and I've been in I've been with them um, sales teams and you know I'm much more of a soft sell you know either you like it or you don't if you don't I'm, I'm okay with that if you want to work with me then I would love to have the opportunity but I'm not going to push 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 and so and that that's something I think is good to do is is listen to your intuition I, I totally agree with you there absolutely yeah because if something is telling you it's not working then you need to listen to it for sure for sure and so many times we override that or we you know we've been trained to trust the logical rational mind and if you don't have a logical reason mm -hmm. for that impression you've got yeah. you tend we tend to distrust it but if when you just accept it and say for some reason, I don't feel like this is the right thing, and I'm going to honor that. Right. That's the right. first step to really opening that connection. And that is one thing I would definitely say about you, Darla, is my impression of you is you are extremely intuitive and connected oh, in very natural and unassuming ways to oh, your higher guidance. You. It's just so innate that it's, oh. you know, you're not doing, you don't have to do a lot of woo-woo spiritual practices. It's just there. <laughs> well, thank you. That makes me feel better. I feel, you know, I'm... I you know I I try to be very authentic and just be who I am and um, yeah so thank you for sharing that with me that that, that little tip you made my whole day cool. <laughs> seriously so so then what else um, are there any other tips that you would share that might you know that you think would help our audience I mean a lot of them are women a lot of us are um, are solopreneurs like you and I are so if there's any other tips or if you've got something that you know that help you know that you would share that would help. Um, what helps keep you motivated? That would be my next question. Okay. The final, the, the one other thing besides really trusting your intuitive guidance mm -hmm. and really clearing any barriers to knowing your intuitive guidance is get expert help before it's an emergency. <laughs> oh, that is so true. Thank you for bringing that up because it is true. And you, you have to... You have to honor who, you know, when you're in pain, it, it doesn't have to be always physical. I mean, it, it can be emotional. It can be all these things that go going into your head and your heart and your soul. And you you need to get help for that. And that not everything can be a prescription from a doctor. <laughs> right, so. because we live on many levels. And exactly. when you just sense that something is not feeling right, mm -hmm. either health-wise or emotionally or in your business, I know that, 
it would have helped me a lot if I had realized that business, you know, people who counseled conscious entrepreneurs were mm -hmm. out there because I didn't even know to ask the question. <laughs> and so I was in really deep trouble financially mm -hmm. before I even realized I need someone who understands business practices right, to help me right. coordinate and business. So yes, yes please, <laughs> expert help. When you realize you know, 80% of your attention is best devoted to your strengths. Mm -hmm. But when that 20% could sink you, mm -hmm. it's best to give a little attention to that and just get the help so exactly. that you can move forward feeling confident and comfortable instead of right. frightened or desperate. Exactly. You don't, you want to get the help before you get where you're, you, you, you can't move anymore. So that's not, that's not healthy at all. So no matter what it is or where you are. But, yeah, absolutely. Can you get them help? I'm sorry. If, if it, and you were mentioning what keeps me motivated. Yes. Now, it's just rebalancing back to yin. So I find that obviously, yes, honoring and celebrating when something went well, you know, mm -hmm. going out for dinner with my daughter, just really uh, saying, boy, that was so cool. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. A lot of gratitude, a lot of, yes. a lot of honoring the good stuff. The self-criticism and self-reproach really mm -hmm. need to be brought down because that's not your authentic self talking there. Yeah. So listening to spirit and recharging. I rest like sometimes I will sleep for an entire day if I need to. Wow. Or I will go to the beach for hours and just be there. Wow. So and play. Like a little kid. I found this <laughs> app that lets me just scribble on my iPad and make pretty pictures. <laughs> I love it. Five minutes How with fun. that and I all better. Uh -huh. And choke Never underestimate the power of chocolate. <laughs> you are definitely my girlfriend. I love chocolate. <laughs> I love chocolate. Yes. I know there's a lot about it. Like the, there's something in it that helps your morphins or whatever. But I'm like, I just love chocolate. <laughs> so and everything you're talking about, I think you, you do have to make that time. And that's something that, um, thanks for sharing those tips because and what motivates you. Because um, I think that's something that entrepreneurs were driven to keep going, keep going, try to get there, right? So, and I have to, I had to like learn, I learned two years ago to stop, stop. And I focus, and I'm trying to share this with some of my, some of my dearest friends, because you know, that are just workaholics, they work all the time, all the time. And I'm like, I don't do that anymore. I've learned the hard way. I burnt myself out, and I overdid it. And I, I wasn't helping myself, I wasn't helping my family, I wasn't helping my clients, and so I make sure I, I have like what I call a 90-day reset. Actually, my husband coined it a 90-day reset. So I take time off every 90 days. And, and, and I always make sure I have like weekend time with my family. And, and, and there's definitely times when I've got a crunch or I've got a project or I've got something out that I've got to get done. Where I'll work, you know, 80 hours. But, but I... Um, but I really have found that that really helps me. So I just got back from walking on the beach and taking the time to see the sunset and see the sunrise and, you know, and just, you know, you know, enjoying the moment, you know, enjoying what life is all about, too. Because I, I did years where I didn't do that. and I was making myself sick. <laughs> so, you know, it's not healthy. So and I love the whole idea of taking, you know, coloring. You know, I've got some friends that do like coloring books. They've got like adult coloring books. They'll sit there and just color for an hour. So, and it just, I think it just brings it back to, you know, what life's all about, right? <laughs> you need to enjoy it, too. Right. It's that sense of safety that mm -hmm. allows you to play. When yes. our inner children can play mm -hmm. and rest and recharge. I mean, the whole thing is, again, rebalancing your energy. When you've yeah. done an 80-hour project, mm -hmm. you really need to recharge, and that means go yin. Exactly. And just feels good. Rest and replenish. Mm -hmm. And then... You'll find that you're naturally inspired to start moving again. But yeah. if you ignore those signals to rest yeah. and play, yeah. maybe have some chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all yeah. of those are <laughs> on my list <laughs> for sure. But I have to say, now that I've been doing this for like a, almost like a year and a half, two years now, um, my family is in tune to it now, and my body knows. I know when I'm done. And I'm like, okay, I have to sleep or I have to take the time away. Or I have to step away from the computer. I have, whatever it is, I, I'm, st I'm, in, I'm listening to myself. And in the, every 90 days, I'll notice, okay, it's getting close. I got to, you know, I'll, I'll get the, get through this last couple of days and I'll have a break. And so that drives me too. And sometimes, you know, that's how I, you know, I, I, you know, I pay myself. I give my, give myself that gift. 
And it could just be a staycation. I could be going on a hike with my husband um, or going biking or taking the dogs for a walk and taking a day off. It doesn't have to be extravagant, but something like that. And then something that it has chocolate <laughs> is always good, right? <laughs> you know, treating, treating yourself, yeah. giving yourself a treat, a gift, something yeah. that tells you that you love you. Oh, really that's perfect. Yeah. yeah, that's a great that's a great little quote there, Susan. It really is. <laughs> so, um, so uh, let me ask you another quick question here because we're doing so well. Um, do you have if someone if you what would you tell someone to, to pay it forward for someone who's starting out in in their business and say there's something in your arena? You know, are there any? Is there like uh, one best advice that you would give to them if they're trying to build their business or whether it's um, you know doing something like what you do or if they're trying to be online? Are th is there any tips that you would give to them? I mean, obviously, the first thing is being very deep touch with your own. This what you were talking about, your natural rhythms. Mm -hmm your way of doing things and really hold firm on that hold firm on your way of doing things because that's going to be authentic and that's yes. you can't serve inauthentically it's just not going to prosper so right. really be clear about what's authentic and genuine for you even if it looks different mm -hmm. from other people <laughs> yeah. and then get some guidance and expert help on the embodied level I would say that was the single biggest difference I'm not truly a solo person, I really would like to have a network and a community around me of people with complementary skills and gifts yeah. and yeah. work together to help each other succeed mm -hmm. at the greatest as possible. So I would yeah. say find the help you need. Just be clear. Yeah. I'm not a webmaster. Don't <laughs> please yourself a webmaster. You know? <laughs> exactly. exactly. Just be very clear about what you don't want to do and say, okay, yeah. universe, send me someone who loves doing this and is on my wavelength. Mm -hmm. That's so that's get perfect. Help. Get help. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have to say so many people look at the, they look at, um, Oh, that's going to cost so much, but it's an investment in yourself too, and you need to do that. No matter you know, in finding the right people. So you know, I have de I've definitely done that. I've gotten help. I've 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 worked with coaches and worked with mentors, and and it's an investment in myself. And that's and it helped me get get over that hurdle or whatever I, the challenges I was working with. And so I would think um, I would think you know, working with someone like you to help when someone is really having issues or they're trying to find, you know, tap into their soul or they want, they want to understand, they want to get to a better place, then I hope that they find you through your website and through my website. And I'm, ha I'm excited to share all that. So, um, so yeah, I, one of the things I wanted to ask you before I let you go, I think I mentioned to you when you and I talked earlier is that I love quotes. And I think you probably like quotes too. <laughs> So are there, you know, I love quotes. I'm a quote girl. And I always like to put, you know, a quote on, you know, what if there's a, a quote or two that you that you love or you live by or that really inspires you. I would love for you to share it with our audience. And then I will definitely be putting that in the blog post as well. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> well, um, the first, the one that comes to mind off right away. And this is one that actually came directly from guidance. So this is not from another author. This is from spirit. Mm -hmm. And wow. it is, make it your intention mm -hmm. not to change who you essentially are, but to become who you essentially mm -hmm. are. That's beautiful. <laughs> that's beautiful. So that's, okay. like, that's like the guiding principle for mm -hmm. my whole life. And... Mm -hmm. It was just dropped into my mind. So I would just say, you know, Susan Sinclair's higher guidance is the source. <laughs> mm -hmm. But the other, there's two others that have really meant a lot to me. And one is the email signature. Uh -huh. And it's um, have the courage to embrace the strangest, most unusual, mm -hmm. most inexplicable circumstances. Ooh. That's by Rainer Maria Rilke. Uh -huh. And that was that was my guiding principle because that first year when all this psychic stuff started opening up, oh yeah, strange, <laughs> inexplicable, um, ex oh experiences. That's the word. Uh -huh. The strangest, most unusual, most inexplicable experiences. Oh, and love that. Thank you, Rainier Maria Rilke. You <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. The yeah. last one was really the the. Another driving thing for me is by Francis Willard. Mm -hmm. I would not waste my life in friction mm -hmm. when it could be turned into momentum. Oh, that's very powerful. 
really and powerful. And that's my purpose is to help people go from yeah. friction to momentum. Yeah, and that's every I, when your soul is not in harmony with your body and your mind and your life. When you're not living the way you know you were meant to live, when you've got sticky relationships or recurring patterns that keep you in pain, that's friction. Yeah, yeah. And the energy you're wasting on that friction could be turned into momentum mm -hmm. when you go from the soul level and clear some of these energetic contracts or issues or yeah. patterns. When yeah. you clear it energetically, it starts changing things around you physically and within you physically mm -hmm. and emotionally. Oh. I find that most people who come to me, mm -hmm. the reason they're there is because nothing else has worked. They've tried body Everything. stuff, didn't change it. <laughs> they tried counseling, didn't change it, mm -hmm. whatever. This is. So they said it must be deeper, and that's where you go into the soul, mm -hmm. and that is where things start changing very deeply yeah. and then change all at all the other levels. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so when you... Friction. Phantom. Yeah, that's amazing. That is amazing. I, and I will definitely put in all those quotes on there. What I do, because I'm a visual person, I'll take them and make make um, images out of them. And that way we can share them. I'll be sharing those with you too, for sure. But I have those on the post so people can either pin them and they can be inspired by, by your quotes. So, yeah, so I'm excited to share those. I, I, yeah. I can't so, wait to see what you do with them visually because <laughs> I know you put words and images together. Yeah. Yeah. Exponentially multiply the impact. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. For sure. So, um, so you know, I wanted to ask you before, because this just popped in my head, so I'm just going to go with it. But when you work with someone, how, how often are you working with them? Do you work with them? Do some people, like, go once or twice? Or are they there with you for six months? How, how does it, how, what's your process, I guess? I really tap into spirit there too and make recommendations to people after this initial consult, the breakthrough session where we get clear about what's going on and whether or how I can help them. Yeah. I listen to spirit and their own soul and recommend mm -hmm. usually four sessions minimum okay. is what okay. it takes to make headway with the kind of things people come to me for. Yeah. I usually have to train them in some psychic practices and psychic mm -hmm. skills, mm -hmm. tapping into their intuition, clearing out a lot of blocks. Yeah. And then equipping them to move forward. So that's usually at least four sessions. Okay. And some people I'm led to re re recommend six or maybe even 12, depending on yeah. what they desire and right. what they want. But I found that one-off sessions can be useful if you've got one single pressing issue and you just need you just yeah. need a roto rooter <laughs> and get it done. Right. <laughs> and I, I'm happy to do that if that's really the best answer for uh -huh. someone. Yeah. Sometimes it is. Yeah. But I really listen because I found that with most people, four sessions minimum mm -hmm. is what's going to give them what they're really asking for, this deep yeah. and lasting change, new equipment, mm -hmm. new possibilities, on path. Right, you know, right. Making progress with out of friction and into momentum. Mm -hmm. That's so exciting. Yeah, it, it does take time. I know when I work with clients, I mean, I, I'm in the process of, of rebranding. I think I mentioned this to you. I'm rebranding re my, my um, um, business and um, really starting to embrace becoming more of a mentor and a cheerleader. I, I don't really like the, I don't, I don't use the word coach very often, but, you know, in that arena. And you, people say, well, can you just work, can I just meet with you once or twice? I'm like, no, you, you need, I need to be with you. If you really want to do this right, I need to be with you for you know at least three months, really, to do it right. To be able to get you where you want to be, to see the differences and make the differences, and so that you understand what all you can be doing. So then you could take it and go from there. So it does take time. Nothing happens, you know, you know, on a dime. You know, we're also used to the, you know, going through the McDonald's drive-through and waiting for the quick fix. So you know, when you're especially when you're working with something as deep as what you know, it sounds like what you're working with. It takes time to do that. So that's exciting. So let me ask you, do you have like discovery sessions with people too to see if you're, you mentioned about making sure that you're a good fit? Do you do that? This is the breakthrough. I call okay. them breakthroughs because usually people have a breakthrough right in those sessions. Wow. That can create some changes. But yes, mm -hmm. it's a it's a free 45-minute conversation with me that I help you prepare for through some questions initially. Mm -hmm. Then we go through it and often I include an energy scan to say, here's what I sense is actually act is you know impacting you on the soul level wow. and here's what I would suggest we do together but yeah you're mm -hmm. you're changing deeply ingrained things if you went yeah. to a doctor for a chronic illness mm -hmm. you would not expect to be cured after a single shot or yeah. a single <laughs> dose of medication you would know 
that you need to persist if you want to shift something that's deep set. Yeah. So that's yeah. kind of what you and I are both working with is changing mm-hmm. people's habits. Exactly. Of re- to themselves and the world around them, mm-hmm. and that takes persistence and support mm-hmm. and some linear time. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. No amount of chocolate's going to help that right away. <laughs> No, it helps, but it doesn't. It's, it's not going to fix it. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah. Well, that is awesome. I I, I, I really enjoy talking to you and sharing you with my audience, and I can't wait for, you know, to put all the blog posts on there. It'll be on, it'll be on soon, and I'll be sharing all your links and um, your, your quotes and your book re- um, recommendations, and um, I really hope that people, I think you're going to do well. You, I mean, just, I could just, like, you're, you're, you just lose illuminate right now and I'm not anywhere near what, what you can see so you know for me I'm just seeing it so it's like it's amazing to um to meet you I'm so excited that we got to meet each other online and we and we, we were persistent we didn't stop we had a little hiccups and you know on my part because my little my little wi-fi issue so thanks for bearing with me and thanks for being on the call with me today I really appreciate having you on here Thank you, Darla. It has just been a pleasure and a privilege connecting with you and and being with you. I oh, mean, yes, I'm you. delighted we, that we connected and I'm delighted that you that we could spend this time together. Yeah, thank absolutely. You so much for, for talking with me. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so happy and excited to share your your story and what you know your gifts and what you can do. So, um, so I uh, so thanks everyone for being on the call with Susan and I today. I really appreciate you guys being here. Um, make sure that you check out Susan's links and go visit her. And you know, by by me by all means, she can definitely talk to anybody all over the world. So um, make sure that you can go and check her out. And and you know, if you feel called and you feel like you're ready, then I highly recommend that you go and you talk to Susan, you know, do one of your discovery so- sessions with her. I, heck, I think I might. So, so yes. So thanks again, Susan, for being on the call and you guys all have a great day. Thank you. Yes. Everybody have a wonderful day. Thank you so day. much. Okay. Bye everyone.